eviction moratorium is expiring, and there's this weird swirling vortex of unsubstantiated blame going with it. Biden says Congress needs to do something, but wait, they've been hitting the snooze button on renewing this thing for just under a year now. They seem to have just collectively woken up, looked at the time, and said, oh, I was supposed to do that an hour ago. And then you have Pelosi telling Biden, no, 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 you have to do something. Millions of Americans are going to lose their house, and even worse, Democrats could lose the house. We're Congress. Don't go to us for fast acting solutions. Now, unfortunately, here the Supreme Court, or the political referee, has come down and said, okay, only Congress can extend the moratorium. Well, now the Biden administration told the Supreme Court to back all the way up and unilaterally extended the moratorium. And I feel like I'm just watching a wrestling match and one of the fighters just nailed the ref with a folding chair. <gasps> what is happening and why can't I stop watching? On today's episode, I just want to take a step back and break down the breakdown and try to figure out what is actually going on. Our story starts on March 27th, 2020, when things got so bad that Congress managed to actually accomplish something. They passed the CARES Act, which partially said, hey landlords, for the next 120 days or so, you can't evict your tenants no matter what. We're going to flatten the curve this summer and by August 24th, well, everything is going to be hunky-dory. Not everything was hunky-dory. When August 24th came, the world did not have a lid on this virus. So what happened? Well, Congress hit the snooze button, which led the CDC to take over the reins. On September 1st, the CDC passed their own eviction moratorium. Now this is where things start to get pretty legally dicey. Everyone agrees that Congress can put a temporary moratorium on evictions. But what about the CDC, an offshoot of the Department of Health, which executive branch? Now the CDC largely just copy pasted Congress's order, except they needed a legal justification for taking this action. Time to get a bit creative. Now they justify their CDC extension under section 31 of the Public Health Service Act. Whenever the director of the Centers for Disease Control determines that the measures taken by health authorities of any state are insufficient to prevent the spread of any diseases, he or she may take such measures to prevent such spread of the diseases as he or she deems reasonably necessary. <gasps> now this generally applied to things like inspections, fumigations, disinfection, sanitation, pest extermination, and destruction of animals or articles believed to be sources of infection. But you know what? No one said it couldn't be applied to preventing 43 million renters from being evicted. Let's round up a little bit and ask for forgiveness, not permission. Now with that, the CDC extended this deadline until December 31st, 2020. You may notice, but that's not today's date. Four days before this order passed its sell by date, Congress woke up from their slumber and said, whoa, let me get on in the CDC order. Instead of creating their own order, Congress chose to just extend the CDC's eviction moratorium to January 31st. Now, spoiler alert, this move from Congress of extending a CDC order instead of creating their own thing would soon be argued in a court as Congress tacitly supporting the CDC's interpretation that they have the authority to do this under that pest extermination law I mentioned earlier. Now, the new date to keep your eye on was January 31st. Although a few days before that, the previous White House tenant had been evicted and replaced with Joe Biden. Now, people were raiding with bated breath to see who, if anyone, would extend the eviction moratorium. And in a surprise to no one, it was the CDC who took the next step. Controversially though, they were this time acting under a day one executive order from Joe Biden himself. The new date to keep an eye on was March 31st, then June 30th, then July 31st. Now this July extension was really the straw that broke the camel's back and triggered the first lawsuit. 
Enter Alabama Association of Realtors versus the Department of Health and Human Services. Now the realtors, apparently opening to make a down payment on that special part of hell, argued CDC. You're using your authority to clear roadkill to prevent us from evicting people who aren't able to make payments. This is absurd. You keep moving these dates backward and you don't have the authority to do any of this. Only Congress can put in an eviction moratorium. Now, of course, the other side, the Department of Health and Human Services, was arguing, hey, Congress signed off on our ability to do just this eviction moratorium when they extended our moratorium instead of creating our own. That's tacit support. Now, the stakes were high in this case. If the realtors won, the eviction moratorium would immediately be wiped out. If the CDC won, they could continue to extend the moratorium indefinitely. Are you on the edge of your seat like I am? Who won? Nobody. It was a 5-4 ruling with Gorsuch siding with the liberal majority. He found that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention had exceeded its statutory authority by issuing a nationwide eviction moratorium. But because the CDC plans to end the moratorium in only a few weeks on July 31st, and because those few weeks would allow additional and more orderly distribution of the congressionally appropriated rental assistance funds, well, he voted at this time to deny the application and allow this overdone order to remain on the books until July 30th. So that was it. The eviction moratorium was still expiring on July 30th also known as four days ago. Never fear though, because Biden just ordered his CDC to extend the eviction moratorium again, in a move that would have made a lot more sense before the Supreme Court explicitly said they didn't have the authority to do that less than a month ago. I'm putting my money on that snowball in hell. Now this really falls on Congress's shoulders. And don't worry, because leaders there are also living in an alternate reality where the CDC won that court case. Pelosi tweeted after the court decision, the CDC has the authority to expend the eviction moratorium. As they double down on masks, why wouldn't they extend the moratorium in light of the Delta variant? Yeah, someone with the authority to do something really should do that thing. I mean, at this point, even Dershowitz is telling you to get with legal realities. With the filibuster in place, though, Democrats just don't have the votes to extend this moratorium. So they're kind of spinning their wheels a bit until the eviction dam breaks. Unfortunately, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! Thank you so much to all my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlift, click on that link in the description. Like, subscribe, and do all that other fun YouTube stuff. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.